Right, mailbag time. Got a bunch of stuff here. Let's get stuck into it. Let's see what we've got. Don't forget there'll be links down below for anything I can give you links for. Lots of rubber feet, different sizes. I've got these before. I actually used them and I thought oh, I'd better restock because I was getting a bit low on them again. They're very handy because it's quite rigid rubber. It's quite strong and it's also got a little metal washer inside there as well. So when you put the screw in there, it helps to preserve it so it doesn't like split open sort of thing. Give links for those. Ah, excellent. So these are nickel metal hydride, 3,500 milliamp hours, 7.2 volts. Another one, it's the same. We've got two more here, the same but different form factor, same capacity as well. Instead of just being a block, it's a flat one. Great. So I actually needed these for a project I'm working on. It's a piece of test gear I'm fixing right now, and I actually needed these batteries to finish that repair off. So they've arrived. So that's great. So you'll see what I use these in very soon. So these are some LEDs. Can I make sense of that anywhere? 100 pieces. Anyway, this is green, 2 watt green. I think these ones will be red ones. Let's get one of these out. And I'll sacrifice one. Yeah, green. 2.3 volts. So that's fine. Let's check the other one out. Yeah, that's red. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's definitely red. 1.8 volts forward voltage. Look at this double bagging thing. It's getting ridiculous. No, oh, no, triple bagging. <laughs> so it's a bunch of battery terminals. And I do repairs on equipment, and sometimes I need potentially replace some battery terminals. Yes, we've got a bunch of these thinking they might be suitable as replacements in some situations. Maybe good for like repairing remote controls and things like that, or bits of equipment which have got corrosion issues. Bunch of these, slightly different styles. A double one like that. These are triple A cell versions. Also, I want the AA cells one. I think I bought some AA cell ones too. Right, this is a switch. So it's an antenna switch, well, Calyx switch, I suppose. PL259 volt, so 239. How hard is this to open? Probably not very hard. Let's have a look. I've got an antenna switch inside my test setup right now, in my other lab there. But I've never been happy with the switch because it doesn't actually switch cleanly. So it will switch and then it won't actually properly connect until I actually like transmit the radio, then suddenly it works. And I've never liked that. And I've tried cleaning it and that sort of stuff and it hasn't actually helped. So it's a bit weird. I finally got sick of the thing. Let's have a look, see what's inside it. So what kind of switch they've used. Seems an excessive amount of screws to hold the back cover on. There you go. This isn't particularly cheap either, these things. You could probably make one you sold for much less money, but I wanted to buy a properly made commercial one. Standard rotary switch. Doesn't really look like it's been like balanced or matched in any way whatsoever does it it's just a double pole switch three position switch that's all I've got in there so we've got it splitting off and going through both poles in parallel so it allows for any contact issues also shares the current across it I suppose but yeah I don't know you really wanted to just build one yourself but I wanted to get one of these to see what it looked like inside this is still going better than the one I've already got because this is a wiping contact is actually better in many ways than the one I've got now, which is a press contact instead, which doesn't seem to behave very well. Anyway, that's what's inside these OPEC CX-5s. It's underwhelming. So the reason I actually got the OPEC version of this switch is that OPEC as a brand has been around a long time. I purchased OPEC power mics many, many years ago. Um, you know, 30 years ago I had them. And they were a really good brand. They performed really well. I was really happy with those particular mics. They outperformed a lot of the other ones around at the time. So, yeah, that's just, yeah, underwhelming. I thought I expected a slightly beefier switch than that, rather than just what looks like a standard rotary switch. Yeah, I don't know. What are these things actually going to be like for insertion? I don't know. I wonder if I can test that. I've got some RF test gear. I wonder if I can test the uh, insertion issues and losses and stuff like that. I probably could do if I really could be bothered.
what do we have here? So this is a Vitron Smart Shunt, 500 amp capable, 50 millivolts, well 50 millivolts resolution I suppose, but this is a digital version, it's actually electronics in here. It's also got some auxiliary input so you can monitor a second battery at the same time so you can monitor the battery voltage, the one you're testing. So this is, this is a shunt, right? So you put this in line with your battery and when you put a load through this, it will determine on here what the load current actually is. It does monitoring and all sorts of stuff. It's quite clever. These extra inputs here, you got auxiliary and VBAT, so it's to monitor the battery voltage as well. So you get this goes to negative, well that one goes to negative, and that one goes to your positive with your battery so it powers it and that sort of stuff. The auxiliary means you can connect it to a second battery as well, as long as you've got a shared ground. Or zero volts, you want to say it. And you also got the VE Direct, which goes to a monitoring system. You can also use Bluetooth with it. These are also some VE Direct cables. Now, you can actually make your own. It's just a standard header type thing, you know, like a little four pin. You can actually make your own, but they won't be isolated. And I actually wanted isolated ones, and I've been messing around making my own cables and having them isolated. And I just bought the right ones. I mean, these are made to go work with it. I've got some other equipment as well. And so these are two-minute cables, something like that anyway, I don't know, doesn't actually seem to say. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think there's two-minute cables. You can use like a um, Serbo GX, they call it. You can also DIY your own version using a Rosie Pi, which is what I'm intending to do. I've shown that before, I've shown the Rosie Pi and the screen I intend to use. I'm DIY my own version of a Serbo GX and um, have my own monitoring so I can plug these in because it's got four USB ports. You can also just use a USB hub, so you put a USB hub near this and whatever devices you're using with the VE Direct. So you can plug these cables into here and then a little hub which then goes up to the Raspberry Pi so that way you only got one cable going out to it. These are very expensive what they are, so it's like $200, something like that, nearly $200 for this thing. It's just a shunt which, you know, I mean, I could probably, I could even DIY my own solution to something like this really if I really wanted to, but I really just wanted to buy into their ecosystem and because it is quite a nice system they use. The way they have it set up, but you do pay a bit of an Apple tax effectively. The second Victron tax. I already have a shunt. This is in my motorhome, obviously, from that. And I already have a shunt, and now I do have battery monitoring already in there. But I wanted to have a linked system agreement between this and my solar charge controller. And I'm going to replace my inverter as well. I'm going to get a Victron inverter because the inverter I've got in there now is 10 years old. I pulled it apart and done maintenance on that sort of stuff, and it's actually been good. Check the caps, that sort of thing, but it's getting a bit long in the tooth now, 10 years. So I'm thinking about replacing it just a matter of course as a preventative measure because I cannot have a failure with that inverter. The inverter must always be reliable, it must always work. I cannot afford for that to break down. So I think it's time to just swap it out before it does fail and um, get a Victron inverter. Then I've got a whole Victron system all interconnected and I can then monitor it, have a central monitoring screen, and I can see exactly what's going on in the entire system. So that'd be the way to go. Oh, it's actually learning. They wrapped it up in the packaging. They're actually finally learning. I've complained about it multiple times about the fact they shoved this in the bottom of the box and then stuffed the packaging on top to protect it. Ironically, it's something which didn't really need protecting. <laughs> Not really. You know, if the one time they've done it properly is the one time it doesn't really need it. So this is just a mini HDMI to HDMI cable. Now, I already have one of these on my camera right now. And the reason I got this is because one of my camera is being a bit flaky. The sockets, well the plug on one end is a bit dodgy, the little mini HDMI is giving me some trouble. So if I knock it or something like that, it just flicks off and it messes up the camera. The camera doesn't quite know what to do and it crashes and things like that. So if you see my live streams, you'll see me often lose the camera if I've bumped into the thing. So, new cable to replace that and hopefully that problem goes away. It's been quite frustrating. Finally, decided to do something about it. Subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. There's other videos to watch down there, repairs and what have you, on screen and down there in the description down there. Bunch of playlists you can watch. Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel and donate. A couple of dollars a month, that's all it is. It helps me to buy stuff from our bag and it's a test room to fix and do videos about. Good luck.